All right. Shall we get started? Sure. Please okay, go wonderful. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so my name is Arkady Shapiro. I'm a product manager at Barefoot Networks, uh, focused on our software development environment and the uh, integrations with uh, switch operating system partners and the uh, you know commercial partners and also open source. Uh, partners like Sonic, right? So I engage a lot in the Sonic community, uh, work very closely with uh, Microsoft and all the community contributors to make sure that you know we can make Sonic better and better. You know we can have the community grow, and of course, uh, have very good use cases for programmable silicon with Sonic, which is what we're going to talk about. Now, uh, just kind of a quick background. I think you, you guys all know about this. You've been listening to Sonic sessions for a whole day, if not two days. Uh, one thing that I would note is that when Sonic started, really originally it's been focused on a fixed pipeline, right? So fixed chips. And when we started working on it, we found kind of a few things that we could do uh, to make Sonic work better for a programmable pipeline, right? Because programmable pipeline can potentially support multiple different use cases, right? Some use, case, use cases are very similar, and some are kind of worlds apart, right? Moving sometimes taking Sonic from data center to the WAN and beyond, right? So we're going to talk about that. But before, one thing I wanted to mention uh, is in terms of programmability, you might hear a lot about programmability in this show. In fact, I heard about it this time more than I ever have from different silicon vendors. Right? And much like SDN in its earlier days, where everybody would talk about SDN, and it took a little while to figure out, well, what SDN really is. Uh, some people may be still debating that. By now, I think more folks have an idea. But really, uh, we believe at Barefoot, there are a couple of things that you have to have to make you programmable. Right? One thing is an open programming language, which is P4. We use P4 to program our data plane. Uh, a couple of other folks uh, use it as well. Uh, the other thing is a compiler. Right? If you don't have a compiler to put the program on the chip, well, then you can't really program it. Right? Visualization tools. right? You have to have something to help you out. For some reason, my slides are advancing. Uh, and to help you out, uh, fit the program onto the chip. And of course, the fully programmable silicon, which comes from Barefoot Networks. Right? All of this must be end user accessible. Right? So while Barefoot can help you out with the P4 programming, uh, our goal is that the end users actually kind of able to do the programming themselves. Okay. So a couple of words on uh, what has happened with Barefoot and Sonic since uh, last OCP Summit. So if any of you remember, at the last OCP Summit, we announced our first support for Sonic, first time we did any kind of upstreaming so that you could have a binary image and basically download the Sonic from the community. Right? And I'll stress this a couple of times throughout, uh, throughout this talk that I personally believe that if you want to be kind of a good partner in open source, you have to have things upstreamed, or at least as much as possible. Right? I don't want to be giving out private barefoot Sonic images that you know, have been, maybe have been hardened by barefoot, but then the whole model breaks, kind of falls apart. Right? So we try to upstream as much as we can and as quickly as we can. Uh, of course, working with the community and keeping things stable, keeping you know, the released images stable and the master stable. Now, so speaking of upstreaming, right, we've been doing quite a bit of that, supporting uh, all the Sonic releases uh, since you know, the last OCP Summit. Uh, kind of last release was the November release, and you know, right now we're actively working on uh, testing the Sonic Master in preparation for the April release, which introduces quite a bit of new functionality. Uh, data plane telemetry feature, I'll touch on that again. Uh, my colleague Roberto was talking quite a bit about data plane telemetry in various contexts, not only Sonic this morning. So I'll dive a little bit deeper on the Sonic side. Uh, so we introduced the data plane telemetry SI attributes and also the feature itself. So we kind of completed the whole stack uh, within the Sonic. Now, it, of course, expanded set of support platforms. This show we announced uh, a platform made by a vendor called Stortis, right? So they've introduced a couple of new platforms. They're working on upstream in the Sonic support, but they have a Sonic running on these platforms. And uh, VXLAN, and in the cases of uh, you know, bare metal hosting, disaggregated chassis that uh, Prince was talking about earlier, uh, you know, we've been working closely uh, with the Sonic community to support VXLAN as part of the November release, and of course any kind of a changes and adjustments that require beyond that. 
And finally, the high availability. Li Hua was talking quite a bit about uh, HA, how important it is uh, you know, to Sonic and to Microsoft in particular. So we've supported Fast Reboot, Warm Reboot. In fact, uh, we've achieved numbers in terms of the outage time for the data plane that are way, way beyond the expectations that were outlined in uh, one of the previous sessions, right? So, yeah, so that all of those things that you know, have been going on with us since the last OCP summit in Sonic, so as you can see, quite a bit of investment on the barefoot part uh, for Sonic. And finally, one thing that I will talk about uh, is the enabling multiple use cases, right? Remember I touched on how can you have programmable platform work within Sonic, right? Just having one data plane in one Sonic binary image is not enough, okay? So quick overview of uh, our architecture of you know, how we kind of implement Sonic. So uh, Sonic obviously uses SAI. Underneath SAI, uh, there are a couple of different APIs going all the way down to P4 level API. Right? So those folks who want to program P4 and perhaps have a feature in Sonic that does not have a SAI equivalent, they can go and talk directly to the P4 API. But of course, as much as possible, to keep things clean, we try to make sure that we have a SAI attribute. Right. So on the left-hand side, there's a P4 application. A P4 application gets compiled, loaded on the data plane, and we map that application into the SI attributes. Okay. Platforms. Uh, I mentioned before that we've uh, increased the number of supported platforms, so I work very closely with our uh, white box, you know, bare metal switches and kind of bright box partners to make sure that all of them validate Sonic and, of course, upstream their platform support to the uh, Sonic GitHub, right? So these are all kind of all the platforms uh, that have Sonic support, right? Some of them are in various stages of the actual upstreaming, right? So if you go on the Sonic supported page and you don't find them there, uh, that's not a sign that they don't work, right? It's just they may be in process of uh, finalizing the upstreaming and all those reviews, right? But uh, definitely you've heard from Cisco before, you've heard from a couple of vendors uh, throughout the Sonic sessions, throughout the show, so uh, they're all kind of reflected here. Okay, now speaking of the data plane, so what we upstream, we have a homegrown P4 program called switch.p4. Uh, now, switch.p4 has a lot of different features. Some of them are used by our OEM partners, by you know, operating systems like you know, NXOS and others, right? They may not be needed in Sonic, so we kind of use the power of programmability to only pick the features that are needed for Sonic. And as Sonic starts adding more and more features, as you saw in the kind of Lihua's roadmap, we can start adding more and more things on the P4 program. Right? So this is an example of some of the features that we have in our P4 program, but only the bold features are the ones that are enabled for Sonic. Now, to dive a little bit more, right? so P4 program really defines a use case. Right? defines the use case based on the features that are enabled, as i shown before, and the scale that's enabled. Right? So unlike a fixed function chip, uh, you may need to have a V4 heavy network or a V6 net heavy network. You may need to have very high tunnel scale for VXLAN tunnels. You may have kind of a medium scale or nothing at all. Right? And the point is, why would you use the space on the chip that you could reclaim and use it for something else? Right? So the option, right, back to my kind of uh, first slide, on how do you make Sonic work with a programmable data plane, you have two options. One is you just compile different Sonic images. One image has with one data plane, another one is with another data plane, all for barefoot, potentially. But that's a little cumbersome. That's very difficult to manage, very difficult to do regression. So what we introduced in uh, 2018 is ability to have a single Sonic image support multiple P4 programs. And this is an example of how we do it. We basically added a configuration file where we can, uh, upon boot time, se select which profile we want to use. And profile is essentially, think of it like a P4 program, think of it of a data plane that's been geared towards a specific use case. Right? And these are the examples of the uh, P4 programs that we ship in the currently upstream Sonic image. Right? Could we do more? Yes, of course we can. Uh, some of them you know, might be proprietary for specific customers that we work with, but whatever is you know, open to the whole community, uh, we try to upstream it uh, and you know, put it as part of our Debian package. Right? So this was done uh, roughly from the summertime, so it's been around already for you know, a little more than six months. Uh, and definitely at every Sonic release, we try to review this and see if we need to add something or remove something, uh, depending on how our customer is using this. Okay? Now, 
In terms of customers getting access to Sonic running on a programmable data plane, there are a couple of different ways. Uh, as I said, right, I'm a big believer in making sure that we upstream things as much as possible. So therefore, I try to encourage folks to download the complete binary image from the Sonic GitHub. Sometimes there are situations where we've added some features either on the Sonic control plane or in our data plane that we haven't upstreamed yet. And you know, for time to market reasons, to basically make sure that people can get going, uh, we may provide a binary file. Right? But again, I try to minimize the amount of times that I actually do that with uh, our customers and partners. And finally, the common question that people have asked me at the show, well, if I want to actually change the data plane myself, let's say I'm ready to do that. Not everybody is ready to do that right off the bat, and that's okay. But if I'm ready to start changing the data plane myself, what do I do? In that case, people get the software development environment from Barefoot, they get the Sonic source code, and we provide the procedure, how do you compile Sonic for Barefoot? Right? So that can be done. Okay? Now, jumping onto the use cases, right? What are the use cases for Sonic with programmable data plane? Uh, first thing is scale, right? I talked about having a V6 only network or V4 only network or something in between, right? So in this example, you'll see that we built a profile that's really focused on you know, V4 routing and another profile that's focused on V6 routing. And I should note that these are not the maximum numbers, right? These numbers are kind of based on what the requirements that we got from customers, right? Can the chip do more? Absolutely, right? but it's a question as to what is really needed for a particular scenario. We're trying not to put uh, more than what is actually needed. Right? Second scenario, uh, Roberto touched on it in the morning, is uh, data plane telemetry. So data plane telemetry using things like INT, INT end-to-end, -end, or INT hop by hop, uh, detecting packet drops, detecting latency. We've done the data plane support. It's part of the Sonic Debian package. Uh, and in the last year, we've completed it all the way up to a control plane. And the building blocks of that is first the SI, right, the detailed SI API, which uh, when Cisco was presenting, they were talking about that, how they used the SI detail API as a base and added a couple of things to it, which is great. Uh, so we've done that as part of SI 1.3. Now, one thing I should note is that there was some discussion about TAM, right? So TAM is definitely an effort that we're participating. And as the TAM evolves and you know, starts to include some of the data plane telemetry aspect, right? Not control level telemetry, but the data plane telemetry aspect to you know, have the ability to detect microburst packet drops. Uh, we definitely will work with the community to fold uh, this type of API into the TAM, right? But the point here is that we actually have something working today. We have it working you know, in uh, multiple customer environments, okay? And then finally, the feature in Sonic, right? We've done some enhancements into Sonic to be able to use those uh, SI APIs. And, and there's some examples here that you know, we have a script that's actually modifying Sonic tables and configuring the data plane telemetry. Okay? And the final use case is uh, hosting of bare metal servers, talking to virtualized uh, workloads, or doing things like disaggregated chassis. So Prince was talking about that earlier. This is just some screenshots I took from the demo show floor. So those of you who are still here, I invite you to come and uh, go to the Microsoft booth. So one of the platforms here is a barefoot-based Arista 7170. Yeah, you can see it highlighted. So it's a multi-vendor demo. Uh, so obviously, you know, the focus here is interoperability and not necessarily highlighting the capabilities of each individual ASIC. But in our case, because of the programmability, there's some interesting things that we can do in particular in regards to scale that we can do for the number of tunnels. Right? And that's certainly, you know, we can have a discussion offline uh, on that topic. Okay? Now, one thing I wanted to mention or kind of, uh, you know, almost close with that is uh, I think we talk a lot about, uh, you know, the adoption of Sonic and the progress we've made. Uh, but, you know, for the show, it's also important to talk about, you know, some ideas for improvement, some things that we can potentially do better in the coming year. Uh, so definitely, it's not a ch necessarily a challenge, but opportunities for improvement. So this, and this is one thing that I saw actually uh, Goku from Alibaba highlight is uh, the need to have you know, a stable release branch and kind of focus on this idea that you, know, you have released images and you have a master images, and there are different types of users for each, right? While some people might be working on the bleeding edge and they might be always working on the Sonic Master, uh, what we found as a silicon vendor trying to do proof of concepts with Sonic and with our silicon is that some customers are not quite ready to do that. They really expect to have a stable, hardened image 
to which we can actually do up, upstream some fixes, right, on a vendor SDK, either fixes on the control plane or also fixes on the vendor SDK, right? If I fix a bug, my customer may wanna, may wanna continue to use the same uh, sonic image versus having to go to master, right? The other thing that we've kind of found with customers, and uh, that's maybe a general challenge with Psy, is that uh, Psy typically, you know, when there's different versions of Psy, uh, sometimes things don't work in a backwards compatible manner. So again, we've seen that if I go load Psy and I try to support Psy, uh, if there are some changes, customers typically have to use, you know, a new SDK in those environments, right? So that's what something I think, you know, as a community, we can try to look into this and try to make things a little bit easier from that sense, right? Because sometimes even a small change, customer does not want to go to a new SD and a new version of Sonic, right? Again, not everybody is willing to, to go that quickly. And finally, on the community test, I think community test has been a very important tool for us uh, as a community to come on the same page as to re is regards to how do we test the quality of a particular feature, right? But one thing that we can see, we saw that even though that the support for a fan out switch has expanded, right, not having one single platform, there's a little bit more work to do there so that truly the community test is independent of a, uh, of a platform on a fan out switch, right? And finally, uh, definitely, as we do very extensive proof of concepts and trials with customers in preparation for production, we do find that there are a couple of things that are missing from community tests, uh, things that are, that are potentially not just at a unit test level, but more use case driven, that those customers tend to find as bugs later on. Right? So definitely, you know, we try to do some of those fixes and you know, upstream them, share them with the community. We encourage our partners and customers to do the same. Okay. So uh, there's a blog that we posted this week that talks about all of our activities at OCP, uh, a lot of it having to do with Sonic. Uh, definitely encourage you to grab the latest Sonic binary for barefoot uh, from the Sonic GitHub. And finally, uh, you know, if you're ready to start uh, programming your own data plane, I encourage you to use the P4 Studio, which is the product name for our software development environment, and you know, start building your own use cases with Sonic. So with that, uh, thank you very much. And more Any questions? Okay, it's, like it's easy room. for you. Okay, thank, thank you. you.